Hello beautiful people and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new here. My name is Jenna. I am a writer and director. I make a lot of queer short films for YouTube but now in my career I'm branching out and I'm actually branching more into the screenwriting world. And that's what we're going to dive into today because it has taken me honestly years to find a writing routine that actually results in me writing screenplays. Who would have thought? And being productive and feeling like I really have a good system down and I finally have that so I want to share it. And as always, I add bonus content behind the scenes, etc. over on my Patreon page if you want to go check that out. Your support is much appreciated. But now diving into my new consistent writing routine that is resulting in me getting more pages done than ever before. So first of all, you want to incorporate something into your routine that makes this writing time really distinct and, you know, ceremonial, ritualistic maybe. For me, it's lighting a candle because something about lighting a candle when I'm beginning and blowing it out when I'm done really signifies for me kind of the completion of a cycle, the completion of my routine. Um, it's sensory, you know, I get the little ones that crackle, I don't know if you can hear it. Um, and then I also, you know, when I'm smelling that specific smell, you know, just helps me stay in writing mode. The second thing is setting goals, intentions, and questions. So what are my very specific goals for this writing time? So for me, it might be a specific character work for her arc in the third act. It might be, I want to revise this scene completely. It might be, I want to write three pages of act three. Um, whatever it is, that's like the nitty gritty specifics of the goals, tangible things that I can say, yes, I did that, or no, I did not, and it is very black and white. Number two, intentions. This is a little bit more gray area. So that might look like character work, dialogue work. I really want to hone in on this element of the script. I want to tighten up the structure of this act. I want to track this person's character arc better. Those things are not concrete. You want something that helps drive your focus because it can obviously be very intimidating to sit down with an entire screenplay that doesn't exist yet and you have to write it all or it does exist and you have to go through and edit it. And so having the intention will drive you through that time um, so that you're not too scatterbrained. For me, you know, it's, I, I can't just like be free reign, like, ooh, I'm gonna work on this. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> Intentions really help me on the days where I don't necessarily complete that goal, but I can still measure it as a success because I followed that intention. And if that intention was to work on dialogue, I did that. You know, I maybe didn't get the specific chunk done that I wanted, but I can feel good about going in and doing what I came to do. And the third thing is questions. So I leave that kind of for what questions I'm still working through. If I'm up in the air about something, that's kind of where I just brain dump like pros and cons of the different things I'm weighing, questions that are coming up. Basically for every project, I have a big master doc of the edits that I wanna do for that like round of edits. So for example, I'm currently working on a half hour pilot I got notes two weeks ago um, and I went through those notes and for the next entire round of the whole script, wrote down that person's questions, all the things that came up, all the edits that I wanted to make based on the notes that I had gotten. So I have a big document with all of those things and it's obviously very extensive because it's for the whole script. So when I go in for my goals of the day, typically I just copy and paste things over from the master doc into like a doc of what I'm doing that day. And I make a whole new document or a whole new page of my notes or whatever it is for every single day that I work to track what I'm doing, what I'm focusing on. And that helps me on days where it's like, well, the script's not done. I feel like I have not made any progress. I'm a waste of space. I can look back and see I've done so much, you know? And like, there's a lot of usefulness to that. Um, and then when I complete those edits, I go back to the big master doc and I just highlight in green the ones that I have completed. And I'll highlight in yellow if like, I did it, but I want to go back and look at it more. And then everything that remains unhighlighted, that's the stuff that still needs to get edited. So ideally, the next round of edits will be complete when the entire document is highlighted green. It is a really, really good time to be writing your spec scripts, polishing your spec scripts, um, because the WGA strike just ended. And I wanted to briefly circle back on all of that touch base. You've probably been hearing about it on the news all summer. Workers from coast to coast are joining the picket lines and they are fighting for better wages, better working conditions, benefits, and more. There's been a whole list of unions on strike this summer and that includes the WGA, the Writers Guild of America, 
SAG, the Screen Actors Guild, the United Auto Workers Union, the Culinary Union, United Here at Local One, who are the hotel workers, and many more. Like I said, the WGA recently scored a massive win after 146 days of striking. UPS workers also secured a historic new contract in August. Meanwhile, the United Auto Workers strike is currently expanding and received the first ever visit from a sitting president to a picket line. Starbucks locations are unionizing around the country, and last year the first Amazon workplace also voted to unionize. So what does all this mean? After decades of laws designed to make it harder for labor to organize, corporate consolidation, and movement of jobs to offshore locations, workers are organizing and pushing back, and they have won 662 elections this year alone, which is the highest rate since 2005. This is important for higher wages. Did you know that people in unions make 10.2% more than their non-unionized counterparts? When union workers earn more, it can boost wages across the industry. Even if other workers don't have a union at their workplace by placing competitive pressure on their employers, unions can also reduce racial and gender disparities in our economy. Unions raise wages by 17.3% for black workers and 23.1% for Latino workers. Workers who belong to a union are 18.3% more likely to have employer-sponsored health insurance so there's also a lot better benefits. And if right-to-work laws in 26 states, like Michigan did, were removed, further progress would follow. Other possible legislation like the PRO Act would also help workers. The government can also enforce labor standards that are already on the books. All right, back to the routine. Now, number three, I do the Pomodoro method, which means you work for 25 minutes, you take a five-minute break, you work for 25 minutes, then f five minute break and then at some point like sometimes people take a 10 minute break at some point I just keep it to five and then like we'll take a longer break in the middle and I'll do you know like four pomodoros and then take a break and then four more pomodoros like so two hours and then two hours something like that and that really helps me kind of not only keep my focus because your girl has ADHD um, but also it gives me, I can break my goal into even smaller sections for like each Pomodoro. And that really keeps me on a good track too. I'm like, okay, in this 20, this is my goal in this 25 minute chunk, I'm going to do this part or, you know, I break it down even more. Now, number four, never complete something, which maybe sounds counterintuitive, but I have recently learned that if I you know, finish a scene and then I have to go in the next day and it's a little bit intimidating of like, okay, well, what next? That is a lot harder to get, start the flow and keep the flow going versus I have recently decided that I have to end in the middle of something. So I have to resist the urge to finish the scene or finish completely whatever I was doing. And then the next morning I will finish it. And that helps me go in with confidence because I'm already rolling off the bat. You got the momentum. Um, that's the way to do it. So life hack, don't actually finish things. Save it for the next day and you'll feel like a superstar because you'll have accomplished something right off the bat in the morning. It's like fantastic. And lastly, number five, I do a recap at the end of my work session, at the end of the day, whatever it is. And I go through and I say, okay, like, did I complete these goals? If I did, I'll cross them off. If I didn't, um, I will write down that I didn't and I will kind of like investigate like what felt sticky, what was hard, if it was a hard day. Like I just kind of like to talk about how everything flowed, how I was feeling about it. And this is really helpful for me to go back and look back on specifically when I have really good days and then I'm having, you know, a harder day. I will go back and read like literally yesterday when I was like, I'm the best writer ever. Like, this is fantastic. This is amazing. I feel like it's pouring out of me and it feels so good. I go back and read that on days that are like literally the next day where I'm like, I am a piece of crap. I am a horrible writer and nothing is good. And it really kind of helps me, you know, balance that out and also just like be aware of, you know, where my strengths and weaknesses are, like what triggers certain kinds of feelings about things, like what parts about writing are really easy for me and what are really hard, what do I need to work on. Um, all of it's just really helpful to kind of recap. So I'll spend just like five minutes journaling at the end of the experience about how it was, how I felt, what I focused on. Um, and I'll find that like sometimes like brain dump stuff comes out there too because sometimes when you're putting so much pressure on like come up with ideas, like that's when it's hard. And then literally like afterwards when I'm taking a walk around the neighborhood, you know, I'm trying to like recalibrate that's when like the idea will hit me so I just like to really write everything down brain dump a lot um, and know that like some days the goals don't even have to be like page oriented of getting done on the actual screenplay sometimes it's like 
I have a goal of like, I want to come up with this backstory for a character. I want to think about like, you know what I mean? Like sometimes it's a little more cerebral, um, which is when I will like journal it, you know, it comes out somehow versus like, I can't let things just be prisoner to my mind because it might like float away, you know, gotta like catch it. Um, but it's not always, you know, on the pages. So those are my five steps to my new consistent writing routine that I've really nailed down. And like I said, like this is the first time where I feel really confident in my process as a writer and I really wanted to share it with you. Again, go check out the Patreon if you want more bonus and behind the scenes content. I appreciate you guys so much. I love you so much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!